Hello, 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 and good morning, everyone. Welcome to our live event for Crafty Cars. I am Ms. Lopez with the Innovation Center, Innovation Station, and I'm so happy you have joined us for this wonderful experience. I want to thank our amazing station partners who have been such great support to the Innovation Station, the Qualcomm Think of It Lab, the Chula Vista Elementary School District, the City of Chula Vista, and our friends at the Chula Vista Public Libraries. The Innovation Station is located at the Civic Center branch. Here, I will get to meet many sixth graders from all over the district as we learn about our strengths and our future careers in technology. Also, behind the scenes, I have my very incredible partners, Mr. Bruder, Mrs. Weisrack, and Mr. Ramirez, who will be helping and cannot wait to take your answers and your questions. Are you ready? Okay, let's get revved up for some crafty cars. The title of our experience today is Crafty Cars. Using any context clues, I wonder if anyone can guess what our topic will be today. Our learning intention is to understand what an automotive engineer does, to identify different types of transportation, and to become a product engineer who will design and create your very own vehicle. Before we move forward, I have a question that I would like for you to answer in the chat. Are you ready? Get those typing fingers ready. When you hear the word transportation, what comes to mind? While you're answering that in the chat, I would like to discuss some types of transportation. Different types of transportation. Let's see if you can name any different types of transportation that I will show on the slide. There are so many that I just can't possibly talk about all of them today, but maybe you can guess a few. Let's start with these examples. Call them out if you know what they are. Horse and carriage. This is not as common as it used to be back in the early 1900s, but you can still see them in certain areas around town or even in other countries and cities. How about this one? Yeah, you guessed it, it's the skateboard. Many of you have seen this. Some of you may even know how to ride one. This is the airplane. Many people use this type of transportation to travel long distances in shorter periods of time. Before airplanes, we had boats. People used boats to travel great distances, and many of you may even know this very famous boat. It is the Star of India, located in downtown San Diego. The trolley, yes! Many cities use the trolley as a public transportation to get large groups of people to their destinations. Oh, this is a good one, this is a good one. Yup, it's the bicycle, another popular form of transportation for people of all ages. That is the bus. All of you have seen this and even used this if you have ever been on a field trip. The city also uses their own buses for public transportation. Getting from one place to another in our daily lives is such an important thing that we have to do. We often travel to several places in just one day. Think about it. How many places have you traveled this entire week? Okay, well, I'm sure you're all wondering about a very common form of transportation that I haven't mentioned yet. Well, I held on to this type of transportation on purpose because I wanted you to focus on the automobile. Today, there are more than 400 different types of models and of cars. There are also very many, several body styles that exist. The seven most popular styles include sedans, hatchbacks, coupes, SUVs, vans, crossovers, and trucks. For the next few seconds, just a few seconds, I want you to turn to someone near you and discuss. What are some features every car must have? All right, I think I could hear most of you and I can guess some of the 
parts that you mentioned. So let's go with the first part. Did you say wheels? Yep, we have wheels. How about windows? I heard you. I heard you with the windows. We also have mirrors right here. We have the steering wheel. We have the engine, of course. And then many of you guys also mentioned headlights. Exactly, and you're right. Most of these cars share a basic structure and chassis to make them legal and safe for transportation. So, who makes cars? I'm not talking about the big companies that you see out on the road, on the big buildings, but I'm thinking more specifically, whose career is it to actually design and build cars? Well, they are called automotive engineers, and automotive engineers are the fabulously innovative people who research, design, and build cars. Here's a quick video that will give you a better idea of what an automotive engineer does. Automotive engineer actually do then? Well, good question. By using mechanical, electrical, structural software and safety engineering, automotive engineers design and build vehicles based on a number of requirements. But what exactly is design? It's the model of a car, right? Yes, it is the model. But how do we get there? I mean, is it a beautiful supercar with ceramic brakes with varied space holes to allow for a higher operating brake temperature? or a family car that allows for not only large crumple zones, but high-speed automated braking that can foresee an accident. How about lorries needing large storage space and to be reliable enough to carry huge loads over long distances without breakdowns? Now, this is what the design is. It's being able to know what the driver wants whilst optimizing technology to get the most out of a vehicle. So, after we know exactly what we want, the fun begins. Testing the heat, the cold, rain, humidity, millions of test miles, wind tunnels that would lift you off your feet. A testing process that adds decades of age onto a vehicle in just weeks. This is the dedication of the engineer. Testing everything. Checking requirements are met and then testing it again. Now we are ready to begin production. Woohoo! Through the use of robots and automation, we are able to produce vehicles fast, economical, and to a set design, vehicle after vehicle. We have come a long way since Henry Ford invented the assembly line, but the principles are still very much the same. And this is exactly what an engineer needs to design. There are many factors that they need to take into account, from bringing tolerances down to micrometers, to the very sequencing of how we are going to actually build the car. What comes first? This is all whilst reducing costs, production time and coordinating a global market of components, distributors, manufacturers whilst eager drivers await their new vehicles. And there are the hypercars, uncompromised on performance, specialist cars, precisely combining the combination of exotic materials such as carbon fibre and magnesium to reduce weight, allowing for a more responsive driving experience maximizing every last component to yield incredible speeds and cornering ability. Now this is what an engineer does, achieving designs that mark new milestones in the automotive industry. So what about the future of the automotive industry? Engineers right now are working on ways to reduce the impact that vehicles have on the environment by squeezing every last drop of fuel from cars with extreme weight shedding through to removing engines and replacing them with their electric counterparts, motors and batteries. We are really pushing the boundaries. You could be working with Formula One cars, engines which are so delicate that they can't run when cold. Warm oil and water is pumped through the components to allow the metals to expand just a little, which allows them to rotate and run normally. Absolutely incredible. Or you could be part of a team that are developing the next vehicle that can travel across the continent without stopping for a recharge. Wow. So, what exactly does an automobile All right, so after discussing automobiles and learning about automotive engineering, I'd love to hear from you. Mr. Bruder, what are some of the great ideas shared in the chat answering the question, when you hear or see the word transportation, what comes to mind? We have a whole bunch. Uh, Sophia and Rafael said a uh, car, like you were talking about. We had Logan and Santino share about a train, a bus, a horse. Samuel mentioned a unicycle. We have bicycles, trolleys, roller skates, airplanes. 
boats, ships, all kinds of different things from land to water. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you everyone for your participation. And there are so many that you mentioned that I didn't even get to talk about. So I'm so happy your brains are all fired up and ready to go. Well, let's go ahead and continue. I want you to meet Victoria Shine. She's only 24 years old and she is already a successful research engineer, which is the research and designing part of the automotive engineering department. Victoria Shine is an anomaly. As a wee toddler and a triplet at that, she wanted a car, a real car. She was such an avid auto enthusiast that her parents bought her a subscription to an automobile magazine. But it was when Victoria saw cars off the page and in the wild that she was hooked. I was in the car with my mom and I saw this really cool sports car. And at the age of four, I just wanted to know what that car was. I wanted to know why it went so fast and how someone made that beautiful car. By the age of about five, her tastes became well-defined. The first car I ever wanted was a Bugatti, and it's an expensive car, so my parents bought me a Hot Wheels Bugatti instead, and it's on my desk. <laughs> on her desk at Ford Motor Company, where she now works as a research engineer. And she's making her mark fast. In only a couple of years' time, and with the help of mentors, Victoria has filed for 30 patents. Yes. At just 24 years old, she has 30 patents pending. To file patents meant a lot to me. It gave me a motivation to come to work each day to create solutions that would help better the world and change the way that I saw myself making an impact in my career and to helping others around me. So what you don't get to see in this video is that Victoria just got her license three days before this interview. She was able to create these designs and these patents before she was even driving. That shows all of you that you can start your ideas right now. So before we dive into our build, here are just a few more details on this career. Automotive engineer re engineers research, design, and build cars based on what people want, what people need, and what is the safest way to provide transportation. They also try to keep in mind how their designs will affect our environment today and in future years. If you are familiar with our RIASEC codes or have been to our stations, you'll notice that their RIASEC code is RI, which is realistic, the doers, and investigative, the thinkers. This means that they like to work with their hands, they like to work with tools, and they love problem solving. As we explore cars a little bit more for our build, I want to ask you to put on the lenses of an automotive engineer. Cars have come a long way since they were first invented. Thinking about cars today, type in the chat, what car features are you thankful for having and why? Oh, and if you have any ideas on how you would like to improve cars in the future, we would love to hear those awesome ideas. Okay, well, it looks like we are ready to get to our build. To start, we will use the engineer design process graphic organizer. The purpose of this organizer is to keep track of our progress. Have you ever been faced with a problem? If so, maybe using this guide could help you solve that problem. So first thing we need to do is identify a problem or what we want or need. Well, how can we travel from point A to point B? Next, we just need to find the solution or the engineering challenge. And that's going to be to design and build an automobile that can get from point A to point B. I have identified the problem and solution, but I still have a few questions. What materials are we going to use? How much time will it take to build? Can we transform the materials? How far does my car have to travel? And how fast? does it have to be? These are all great questions and we will try to answer them as we get to our build, but it's okay if more questions come up because that's all a part of learning. 
All right, so something I want to imagine is what ideas out there can inspire my automobile or my car. So let's take a quick look at this model right here. It imitates the basic chassis of a car. This design looks like it could be something I could build as a solution to our problem. Okay, so it has all of these parts of the chassis. Let's check out the materials. I must think of what kind of materials that I have available for me. So I know I have some crafting sticks. I have some bottle caps, rubber bands, wooden skewers. Ooh, I have straws and scissors, dead batteries. Yep, a glue gun and a push pin. All right, I think I can pull this off so I can go ahead and move on to the planning stage. Let's plan what our ideas are and what our prototype will look like and what we want it to do. So what materials am I going to use for the specific parts of the car? With a lens of an automotive engineer, we will also test and make any necessary improvements. So what are we building? We are going to build a car that will allow travel from point A to point B which will be around 24 to 36 inches. That'll be two to three rulers full length. Okay, so let's get our uh, materials together. If you haven't done so yet, go ahead and get those bottle caps. You'll need four for your wheels and then two craft sticks, some glue, a pencil to measure. You can use pennies to put weight on the back of your chassis or anything else that will distribute weight evenly to the back of your chassis. A push pin to create some holes, rubber bands, three of them, a ruler, scissors, skewers, straw, and buckets of patience. If you need any alternatives instead of pennies, I'm going to be using some batteries. You can use bolts. You can use anything as long as it's equal on both sides. You can even try it without the weight. Maybe it will still be successful. You can also use Elmer's glue, the white glue, or duct tape, but I will be using a glue gun today just to make sure everything dries with enough time to test this out. Okay, let's get ready to create and test our crafty cars. On the screen, you will see the materials that we are using for today's build. The first thing I want you to do if you are using a glue gun is to go ahead and plug that bad boy in to make sure that we are going to be ready as we start to glue. First thing I like to do is get the wheels going. So I'm going to take this push pin and in the center of that we, uh, bottle cap, I'm going to poke a hole and then I'm going to try to wiggle that pin around just to make that hole a little bit larger. What I also like to do is take the skewer and then stick the skewer in there and then roll it around so that I know the skewer can go all the way through that bottle cap. We're going to do that four times. Here's my second wheel. Remember, you can pause and replay anytime you want on the YouTube channel in case you need a little more time or you just want to enjoy watching the process for now and then get to your build a little bit later. I am now working on my third wheel in case you are trying to test your pacing. And then now my fourth wheel. Ooh, that was tough. Okay. Hopefully, as you are working on your fourth wheel, your glue gun is prepped and ready to go. All right, so there are my four wheels. I'm gonna put those aside for now so that I can work on this little mat. 
take your ruler for this part. I'm just going to measure a few things on the straw. I'm going to use the inch side of the ruler, and then we are going to measure one piece that's going to be a full inch long, and then another piece, I'm going to move that, and we just want this one half of an inch and another half of an inch. So now we're going to cut three small pieces from our straw. And then we are then going to take our skewer, the same one that we were using, and on the other end, that's not so pointy, we are also going to measure a few things. We are going to measure one that is going to be, hold up, that's one's going to be one inch. I'm just trying to look at my first prototype. Yep, one inch. And then we are going to go to, move that over to the side. We're going to go to a half an inch. Oops. And then another half an inch. And then we're going to do one that's a little bit longer. Start from there. We're going to have one that's going to be two inches for the axles. And then another one that's going to be four inches. So let's try that again. So we have one that's one inch. And then I move that over back to the edge. And then I'm going to have a half inch. And then a half inch. And then a two inch. And then a four inch. So if you wanted to go ahead and write that down, it's one inch, a half inch, another half inch, a two inch and then a four inch. I'm going to go ahead and cut those pieces. And if you notice when you cut them, it's a little bit difficult. So if you just take the scissors and grind down the skewer for a little bit, you can then go ahead and start to break them off. Just make sure you have enough bite in your scissors to form those indents. So we have the four inch right here. We will have the three, two inch, sorry, two inch in just a second. Half inch. Going to move those to the side. Now we're going to start gluing. So hopefully everyone's glue guns or glue is ready to go. We are going to make sure to glue the craft sticks in a shape that's very similar to a triangle. Oops, together. When I glue those together, I'm going to take the longest piece of the straw and I'm going to lay it down on top of that glue. Okay. That will also help keep it stable. At this time, I'm going to go to the other opposite ends of the craft sticks. I'm going to put a little bit of glue over there. And then I'm going to take the short straw pieces and then lay them across the craft sticks like that. Do that. Ha. Careful, glue is hot. Make sure you also don't touch the tip of the glue gun. And then finally, with that, I am going to stick, we're going to need the two inch and the four inch. The two inch is going to go inside the straw at the very tip of the triangle and the four inches is going to go on to the back side. Okay, 
at this time I'm thinking it's my pieces are dry. If yours are not dry yet, that's okay. You have a little more time. You can always just pause and come back. I'm going to go ahead and stick the bottle caps on as the wheels. Um, you can go ahead and stick it oops, so that the open part of the bottle cap is facing out. You know what? I'm going to do it this way because I'm having a little bit of difficulty. There we go. And the reason why I'm suggesting we put the bottle caps um, facing out is sometimes we might have to glue the bottle caps. You can see mine are pretty secure, so we won't have to glue. But leave a tiny bit sticking out in case you do have to glue the bottle caps steady onto the skewer. Okay, so now I have my front axle. Let's go ahead and get my back axle going. <laughs> I'm not sure why I'm having such a difficult time getting these skewers in. Oh, there we go. Let me just scooch it out a little bit. Okay. So if you're noticing that your bottle caps are a little loose and they're falling off the skewers, you can take the glue gun and then glue some ends to your stick so that it will not fall off of your skewer. So look at that. Da, 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 da. Oh no, I'm noticing a little bit of a lopsidedness going on over here, but we'll see. Maybe it's not going to make it too big of a difference. Okay, now at this time, I'm going to take one of the smaller pieces. You can decide. I'm going to take actually this one piece. You have an option to take this smaller piece or the bigger piece. I'm going to take the larger piece just so I have a longer anchor for my rubber band. Okay, now very carefully. Oops, ouch. Very carefully, you're going to go ahead and hold the skewer so that some of it is sticking out from the top of the tip of the triangle. And then you're going to glue this down onto the tip of the triangle. Now, that bottom piece of glue is not going to be enough, so you're going to want to glue the top side as well. that a few seconds. I'm going to readjust it. I want just a little less stick out. Okay, we want to make sure that that is very secure. And then finally, over here, down at the very bottom, we are going to get the craft stick to go perpendicular across the middle of that axle. So I'm going to stick this down right there. So I put the glue down first, I laid the stick across, and then now I'm going to glue on top of it to make sure it is as secure as possible. Give that a few seconds. I blew on it just a little bit, and then I'm going to turn it around, and then, oh, I still have some glue that's following gravity. Look at that. It's fine. Doing its best. And I'm going to glue all of that as well. Now, technically, your chassis is complete at this point. You can see it's moving. Now, I ooh, maybe be careful with the moving so that this guy, ooh, this guy doesn't move. We want him as straight, facing forward as possible. And then I will add, you can stop here, I will add my weight at the very end of my car. So at the tip of the um, frame, put this tip in here.
Okay. Now I am complete. I'm going to just make sure that is secure. It's, oh, this guy's still a little wet. This guy is completely dry. Okay. So we can see it is now moving and rolling around. We want to make sure as you're testing this, this back drivetrain, power axle, the skewer is not going to be touching the ground. You want to double check that it is short enough so it does not touch the ground as the axles roll around. Okay, now I'm going to take my rubber band. And with that rubber band, I'm going to tie it to the very front, which is going to resemble the engine. And I'm going to anchor it to the back. And then I'm going to use my hands to roll, roll, roll. And you want to try to make this rubber band as tight as possible. And then once you have rolled that all out, put it on the ground and see how your chassis works. Oh, mine ran into the object in front of it, but it looks like it's doing pretty well so far. Okay, so. This is a video of my first prototype. This is very similar to what we just built together before I made some changes. Check this out, check this out. Oh, hold on, you gotta see it again. You gotta see it again. Yep, you will notice that my first prototype was not traveling very far because it would just flip over as soon as it started. I had many, many attempts that were not successful, but I just had to keep on trying to make those improvements. So what would you do to improve your design? After hours of tantrums and tears and Google searches and all these phone calls that I had to make to my more knowledgeable friends, I made several revisions on my prototype. Some helped, some didn't help, but I just kept going to make sure I can get my prototype to do what I wanted it to do, travel from point A to point B. Some revisions I included were adding more weight to the back. I even changed the wheels. I used bigger craft sticks. I wrapped the wheels in rubber bands for some traction. I changed the sizes of the rubber bands and changed the different wheels, smaller in the front, larger in the back, and vice versa, to see what would help. What seemed to be the most helpful was the size of the rubber band that went from the engine to the drive axle and the powertrain. Too short would make the car turn over, and then too long would not give the correct amount of torque to get the car moving. The perfect size was tight enough to give the car the, the proper torque or the power to start, and also long enough to keep the car moving forward. If you feel any of these revisions would improve your prototype, give them a try. If you have your own ideas, also give them a try. We can always learn from trying. success. Okay, so before we go to our Kahoot game, get those laptops going. I'd like to confirm that we went through the entire engineer process. We went through the ask stage, which is the problem and solution. We went through the imagine stage to get our inspiration. We went to the plan stage, gathering our materials and asking about any constraints and qu asking our questions. Creating stage, which we did our build and our improving stage to test and make any changes. So far, my crafty car seems to be holding up and is able to travel from point A to point B. Those of you that have any suggestions on how to improve your crafty cars, feel free to share with your partners around you. We can always get inspiration from other people's ideas. Da -da -da -da. On a separate window or a separate device, you can so that you can see my screen and your Kahoot screen. Let's go ahead and get logged in. So as students are logging in, let's go to you, Mr. Bruder. We ask the questions, we ask the students to share what car features they are thankful for having and why. And also, if they had ideas on how to improve cars, we would love to hear them. Did we get any feedback, Mr. Bruder? 
Hey, Mrs. Lopez. Ms. Lopez, yes, we did. So your first question about the features that they're thankful for. One person said air conditioning, which definitely oh, helped us this summer. Yes, good one. Uh, Logan shared the engine so that it can run. Samuel said the cup holders so that it doesn't make the car a mess. That That's a huge innovation right there. Yep. Uh, Dave shared the seat belts. Definitely yeah. protects us and saves lives. Uh, another person shared the touchscreen consoles. Oh, those are fancy. Yes. Uh, another person shared all the smart functions that come in cars now. And Santino shared the airbags that come in cars. Oh, could you imagine we there was a time when we didn't have airbags and they definitely keep us safe. Were there any suggestions on how to improve cars for the future, Mr. Bruder? Yes, a lot of them focused on the fuel. So we had people share about longer lasting fuel tanks. We also had some about designing cars that don't need fuel using alternative alternative forms of energy. So it looks like a lot of our viewers focused on improving cars by reducing the amount of fuel consumption. Oh, we have some smart kids, don't we, Mr. Bruder? We definitely do. Some future automotive engineers here. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys, I'm looking at this Kahoot and it looks like we are filling up pretty quickly. So I'm going to give you guys just a few more seconds to log in. 87 players already. Wow, this is pretty awesome. All right, I'm going to turn on the music to get you guys pumped up. All right. If you joined us late, you can always join us with a pin that will be placed on the bottom of the screen. All right, here we go. Crafty cards. So excited. So excited. What transportation was not in today's live event? All right, so what transportation was not in today's live event? Was it the skateboard, red triangle? Was it the scooter, blue diamond? Was it the car, yellow circle? Or was it the bus, green square? I always forget that shape, I don't know why. But anyway, let's try that again. What transportation was not in today's live event? <laughs> red triangle, the skateboard, blue diamond, the scooter, the yellow circle, the car, or the green square, which is the bus. Let's get those answers. Ooh, 95 answers in already. That's fantastic. Great job, guys. And let's see who gets top score. The scooter, you're correct. That was one that I didn't mention today, but I always have it in the back of my head because we see them all over. So let's see. <gasps> Zany Oryx, nice job. 978. All right, the next question. What form of transportation is more common than cars? I won't even try to read that in Spanish. That is going to be the red triangle trucks, the blue diamond, walking, yellow circle, bicycles, or the green square buses. What is, what form of transportation is more common than cars? We have red triangle trucks, the yellow circle bicycle. I'm all over the place today, everyone. I'm so sorry. The blue diamond walking or the green square buses. Hmm. Wonder if this gives anybody a hint. All right, let's get those answers in. Here we go. What form of transportation is more common than cars? <gasps> Walking, yes. Good job, everybody. Ooh, ooh, there's some movement. Dr. Puffin, 1961. Nice job, Dr. Puffin. All right, the next question is, blank 
invented the assembly line? Was it Henry Ford, red triangle, invented the assembly line? Was it Blue Diamond, Enzo Ferrari, who invented the assembly line? Yellow circle, Ferrucci Lamborghini invented the assembly line? Or was it Green Square, Arthur Chevrolet, who invented the assembly line? Let's see if we can try that again. Henry Ford invented the assembly line for red triangle. Enzo Ferrari invented the assembly line for blue diamond. Ferrucci Lamborghini invented the assembly line for yellow circle. Or was it the green but square who invented uh, Arthur Chevrolet for the green square who invented the assembly line? Let's see what you think. You've been listening to the video. Yes, Henry Ford invented the assembly. Oh, some more movement. Super sloth. 2,921. Nice job, super sloth. All right, here's our next question coming up. Our prototype today imitated a car's red triangle, the trunk. Our prototype today imitated a car's chassis, blue diamond. Our prototype today imitated a car's drive axle, yellow circle, or our prototype today imitated a car's engine or motor, motor, for green square. Let's try it again. One more time. Our prototype today imitated a car's trunk, red triangle. Our prototype today imitated a car's chassis, blue diamond. Our prototype today imitated a car's drive axle, yellow circle. Or our prototype today imitated a car's green square, engine. You know what I meant. A car's engine, which is the green square. Oh my goodness. All right. In a few seconds, we will see the answer in a chassis. Well done, everyone. Is there move? Ooh. Super Sloth, hold it in the lead. Well done, Super Sloth. Last question of today's Kahoot. Does Super Sloth hold the title? An automotive engineer researches, designs, and blank automobiles. An automotive engineer research designs and builds automobiles. An automotive engineer researches, designs, and sells automobiles. An automotive engineer research designs and drives automobiles, or an automotive engineer researches, designs, and cleans automobiles. What do you think an automotive engineer does? Let's read that again. Does an automotive engineer research design and build automobiles? Does an automotive engineer research design and sell automobiles? Does an automotive engineer research design and drive? automobiles or does an automotive engineer research design and clean automobiles what is your best answer here we go yes an automotive engineer researches designs and builds automobiles tears on podium third place dr puffin nice job dr puffin second place Stellar, stable, and first place. Did you do it, Super Sloth? Yeah. Super Sloth! Congratulations, everyone. Thank you for playing in today's Crafty Cars Kahoot game. And just to finally, sadly, wrap it up, I would like to thank you for coming. And if you liked this live event and want to learn more, please be sure to go to our Innovation and Instruction YouTube channel. Our moderators are going to put those links in the chat right now. You, there, you will find many more hands-on STEAM events from our innovation team, which you can build and create anytime and anywhere that you want. And finally, please join us on our next live event with Mrs. Hughes at the Energy Station. It will be on Friday, November 18th at 9 a.m. Thank you so much everyone for coming and have a great weekend. Bye everybody.